My name is Roland Junk from ePlan Canada, and I want to talk about the biggest secret of all. People do not necessarily realize, but here, when you look at our website, we actually talk about it. Rital and ePlan have worked together to figure out when we do build the panel, how does a curve like this get reduced? It's basically the effort and the time just being over time reduced. We look at engineering, we look at sourcing, we look at manufacturing. The biggest portion where you can save in manufacturing is here, at this level here, at the wire fabrication level. If you could have a wire printer like this wire terminal that literally prints the wires and then hands it over to someone on the shop floor with ePlan smart wiring, this is where you can gain the biggest time. So technically here, the wire terminal itself is a wire printer like this. And this wire printer is basically allowing us to transfer information from ePlan directly to these printers. I call them printers because they literally take my ePlan information and print it out. They basically create the wires with exactly the right crimps at both ends, right? And then I can switch over to the smart wiring and I can help myself install the wires, land the wires. Typically, these two actions together are, when we add them up together, anywhere between three and four minutes. We print the wires in roughly here on this machine, on the WT, in 12 seconds. You can actually do this semi-manually in about 30 seconds instead of three minutes. And the landing here, we actually can monitor how far we are because as we move forward, the landing of the wires is actually ticked here as a green installed connection. And we have a smart wire controller that actually server that controls what was done. And we have a dashboard that can actually monitor how fast your electricians are working. Now, coming back to ePlan, um, we have here uh, the ePlan wires. Of course, you all know that the wires actually come from the original schematics, but how is the length is actually calculated? The length is calculated based on where your components are positioned and placed. And it's a simple task. It's something very, very simple. All we do is we select the, wire, the, the, the objects that we placed, so all the components that we placed, and we route them. And as we route them, they find the best way to their components and to their connections. Now, the one thing that you can see on this particular one, let me just open that particular door that is on the right-hand side. I can see that I have some wires that are going across the diagonal. This means that on these doors, on this door, I actually specified where I can actually go through, and these are routing paths. On the right door, I did not do this. So how do we, or how do we go about to define these routing paths to actually, instead of going straight, which is obviously not the case, right? Nobody would actually go boom directly <laughs> over because then you wouldn't be able to open the door. We will do this here and I'll show you how the routing actually works in ePlan. So I'll activate actually here uh, because we have two different surfaces. I'll activate this, I'll insert, the uh, routing uh, path that I'm going to use. In this case here, I'm actually working with a grid setting of, uh, of an inch to just make it a little bit easier, right? And then I start placing and then say, okay, from this side here, let's just uh, move my way up to here, move my way over the grid. Maybe I don't want to display it. So I'm just going to go down here, go over here, hit the space bar, so that just basically kicks me out of the insertion and I can create those. Now at this point here, I have to be a little bit more uh, careful. This one here, I will delete. I don't necessarily want it, so I can simply delete this, this one. And I will start initially with this one here, and then I'm gonna cancel the direct activation to actually be able to get to this top level of the uh, profile of that door. Now, once this is done, I can basically either select the backplate and say, okay, please show me the selection I just did. 
So the back plate comes up and within, you know, either the rotation or however you want to do this, you can actually continue placing that routing path so that at the end of the day, you end up connecting on the right side, right? So here I have basically uh, different uh, views of the panel. So this is not the right one. This could be okay. If I rotate it, I want to get to the back of this. So stop the rotation. You're still inserting. And now you should be able to actually go over here and pinpoint one of these routing paths that is there. Now, here, what we just did is we defined a possible routing path or a way to actually connect these push buttons that we originally had set to connect to uh, the, the, the terminals or whatever is on the back side. So if we try again to go here our, in our connections and route these, well, you will see that these push buttons will immediately find their way uh, the wires actually connecting to these push buttons will find their way through these routing paths that I just did, and they will connect right there. As you can see, I still have some that are not connecting to the right uh, place, but I'm going to handle those ones afterwards. But this is actually what determines the length of these uh, individual uh, wires. So technically, as we did the routing for the whole panel, we can go back inside ePlan, and we now have the exact length of every single wire that is actually encrypted here, which also means this is a report, right? It's a report we can print, but really much better is to export this right away within our tools. We have this, we can export this automatically to the wire processing machine, which means we transfer the information to this wire processing machine and it will actually, this one here can print, crimp, and tag the wires. Otherwise, what you can do is you can go in a semi-automatic way where you take this C8 plus wire cutter. As the wire gets cut, you actually move over to the crimper here, which automatically then crimps both ends. And whatever labeler you have of your own choice, could be Phoenix Contact, Wago, Rital, whoever actually hands over the, the, the printer, you print the wires that are actually then actually wrapped around your wire and your wire is ready to be moved over to the guy that will do the installation here. And I promise you, you will be saving an enormous, an enormous amount of money. Put this together, think about it. The wiring is probably the biggest, the absolute biggest time you spend on fabricating your panel. I understand you have to drill holes. I understand you have to cut ducts and rails. I have, understand you have to put labels out there on your devices. I understand you have to place these labels and these terminals on the terminal, but that's probably half of your time. Half of the, the time is actually spent on wiring and fa the fabrication of the wires. Really, this is the biggest secret, believe me. We've done this numerous times. We calculated this numerous times. Anywhere between 40 and 50% of your panel building is spent on the wires. Believe me, it really is worthwhile. This was Roland from Eplan Canada. Thank you.